episode 18 of The Scumbag. I'm here with Jesse, and we've, we're have we really, really grateful as well because we had Milo Yiannopoulos cancel at the last minute. We've got Rob Corddry with us today. Yeah, so sorry about um, Milo, guys. That's a real bummer. He's a real get. Yeah, I wanted to ask him if he was Greek and then just hang up, but... <laughs> It's, I've actually had a, a Greek journalist inform me that he's not Greek. That was like his big thing that he, like a big story he got. You know, that, I, that's I, a stage name. That's like a big, you know, Hollywood <laughs> stage name. It's actually like um, Smith Johnson. I, I do like that that we managed to kick off today, though, with seeing a guy who got really proud of outing someone for being a pedophile being found out to kind of sort of maybe be one like everyone's acting like he actually was co- i don't know like sp- the specific statement he made could have been him joking i don't really care i'm just happy to see him suffer yeah me too i i think because i don't actually believe anything that guy says i mean if you can believe that but uh wow i don't believe that he really believed i really do think that that guys like that i mean he is a gay uh spokes uh you know unofficial spokesperson for the or or official depending on how you view breitbart uh spokesperson for the alt-right um and 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 he's and he's beautiful and he knows how to dress he's like i found my i'm gonna be so famous and uh this is he's just a provocateur uh i haven't read any of his uh, articles or but um, we can pause. you know his philosophy. We can pause. But uh, I just from what I've heard about him, I just don't. I I, I think the emperor is wearing no clothes. Well, apparently with thirteen year olds, that's the issue. Uh. Well, no, no, no. Okay, so so I've been trying to get a microphone set up for the last three hours. <laughs> that I heard about the pedophile stuff, but now they're now they found that out that he likes little boys too. No, not really. It's that's just it's I, I don't really feel bad making a bad taste joke about oh, Milo. OK, good. No, no good. but he, he did. He did make a comment about a, he posted on something about this boy called Justice, I think, who is a 12 year old African-American asking if he was single. And again, it's a joke. It's clearly a joke. It's, right, a, shit, right, right. it's a shitty joke. And it's just like <laughs> it's just. But the thing is, it's not the time. It, I'm sure it's a time when people are going to be like, oh, we need to be sh- we need to be fair. Someone's going to fucking say that. But no, it's the time to be unfair and laugh at him. Do you guys remember? I mean, uh, it was only a couple months ago that um, there was this controversy. I don't know how um, how big the reach was on this story with Adult Swim and that it had picked up an alt right yeah. show, you know, that it just recently canceled. Brett Gelman. I think was the one that brought it in the news because he left the network. Yeah. Um, and you know, I have a lot of stuff going on with that network and we, we talked a lot about it and um, I was sort of the voice of, you know, I guess <laughs> dissent in a way there, they, everybody was like, well, I don't know, maybe we, maybe we should get out. But uh, it, I didn't believe them i didn't think like i think like they're they they've they've they're what they're doing is horrible they've generated a a a, a, a hateful crowd um but i don't necessarily think they believe any of that garbage and they're not that funny well and to give it a little bit of uh of of background shading and you're talking about million dollar extreme sam hyde uh, they had right. the show uh, MDE Million Dollar Stream presents World Peace, and then uh, because of the fact that it that it dusted up so much uh, resentment and ill repute for the network, I guess um, Brett Gelman, who's a very funny guy, uh, very funny. Uh, decided not to work with him anymore. Or I don't know if he's I don't know what's going on there right now, but made a statement to that effect. And um, yeah, I, I agree with you that it's not always true that these guys believe what they're saying, but um, from my own experience of dealing with the MDE guys and the, the people who attach themselves to that, um, that brand of, of comedy. um, Yeah. It's, it's almost like it, there's no difference because right right. at a certain point uh, it's come up in your interviews. um, Something that's, that's happened in ballers. You uh, you say the N word in front of a bunch of African American people, 
uh, who you said uh, didn't know that uh, that you were going to say it, right? So that's no, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't know that. I just watched that episode. Shit. Oh yeah. So now I have another racist on the show. Yeah, go watch that. Um, go watch that take because. No. That's the first take of the audience hearing me say that word, <laughs> but but that's not the but that's that's a that's a clear joke uh, because it's it's set right. up against expectation, um, and the person who is uh, and and it seems like you you get lumped into this character all the time. The guy who really gets it, the the guy who the audience gets to jeer at or whatever. Um, yeah, the dope, the guy. Well, and in this guy's case, you know the particular shade of this dude is that he just really wants to be part of the game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and but and, and with MDE, uh, I think the only way to appreciate that style of humor or the, the, the sketches that they were putting on, on their show or on YouTube or whatever was you have to accept that you're the dope. Um, and it's not that you're laughing at them for their bad opinions or their attitudes or, or the racism or vitriol or whatever. It's like, uh, you're supposed to be laughing at, I don't know what you're supposed to be laughing at. Um, I don't either. I don't know what to take away from it. And that's something that I know is coming, coming from where I'm from, England, obviously. I, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, this fake accent's fight, failing me. Bullshit, by the way. Yeah, this stupid fucking accent. But it's so coming here and watching Americans discover irony roughly two years ago has been really <laughs> weird. But like, children, and, and I don't want to make this a whole thing where we just talk about all the shows you're on, but Children's Hospital did it really well in the... One of my favorite, probably my favorite joke thing you've ever done is actually truly horrifying. It's when you like realize your child in your childhood you were molested at the end of like the first episode. <laughs> right, right. And it's brilliantly done because I could imagine someone getting horribly offended, but the intention isn't offense. And that's one of the big things that England has had this for ages. And I mean, I'm only somewhat joking about the irony thing, but you see more people trying it these days. But I don't really understand. And it is, it's like, like Jesse was saying, it's, it seems like they know it's kind of a farce and I guess the joke is on the audience or maybe people just really want to say the N word. Like it's just that now's their big chance. And well, they, I think, and re- yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, it's I, I like when, when you did it, it worked out as that kind of horrible, poisonous, sweaty Miami desperation versus right. I'm going to say it because because now I can because it's yeah. over because the alt right exists now. I got a window. Really, <laughs> this is my big shot. I got a an end window. And, and for better or worse, <laughs> you have to pair what the material is uh, with what you know about the people and the processes outside of it now. Uh, it's maybe it's ridiculous, and I don't know if it's the way that things should be necessarily. But you know, when Rob Cordry goes on Ballers and says the N word, you're like, all right, well, that's on HBO. Uh, it's, it's, these things get passed through a number of filters. The people who write yeah. this show and the people who are on the show are not doing this uh, t- intentionally to be provocative on purpose. It's a part of the plot of the show. It's, we get that. And we know that from your personality outside of it and all the other kind of, st- um, all other kind of stuff. Pardon me. But when you look at MDE and you look at his show and then you go online and he's saying the same thing with the exact same veneer on it, I don't know how you're supposed to be able to delineate the difference between, what's supposed to be funny on the show and what's supposed to be funny in real life. And like I said, eventually what's the difference between that? And then if he was just being honest about it, if he was just really all right. Yeah, I agree. I agree that, that you made a, that's a really good point. I, I, um, Oh God, guys, let me turn my phone off. That's turn it so up. embarrassing. No, turn it up. Oh my God. <laughs> guys, <laughs> put him on. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Oh. It's Brett oh. Gelman. <laughs> it is Bre- How is he it's listening Milo, to this it's live? It's Milo Yiannopoulos, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Brett. He's... Yeah. No, he's not really British. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know where he learned. I don't know where he's trained. Well, I can ask him. He wants to know uh, where you're really from and 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 who your your um your uh, voice teacher was. Uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I went to the Penn State College of Racism. He said a bunch of a uh, bunch of bullshit <laughs> about uh, Pennsylvania. I wasn't listening. Oh, okay. See ya. I love you too. Bye bye. <laughs> no, Brett's fine with that. That all checks oh, out. I knew he was a good Thank guy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad he called. It was it was nice of him. But it's nice. He always checks in. <laughs> and he's magic. Magic. 
<laughs> but it's really weird though. It the first time I remember this kind of shitty comedy it is shitty co- when you when you fall back to the thing where you have to swear for the funnies uh-huh. where you have where you have to say something ooh to get him going was the first time I remember someone being like ooh you don't like that and I don't remember his name but the bloke who played Kramer in Seinfeld when he famously mm-hmm. destroyed his career for literally no reason I just don't know what he was like I'm doing really bad stand up when I really take this home. But that was the first time I remember someone just trying to do that. I guess he was maybe making a point, which is where these things intersect. Where you're say, they are claiming it's not just comedy. I'm making a political statement about freedom of speech. And it's just, oh, fucking hell. It's just lame. I, I will. The Kramer yeah. bit is funny, though. The, the Kramer, bit. <laughs> Kramer bit will go. It will have its day. <laughs> we're we're uh, about to come back around on that one. That one's funny to me. <laughs> have you sat down? Have you heard it lately? Have you like? Have you revisited the material that he was doing? I, I have not revisited it. I'm yes, a, I do. I every like three times a year. <laughs> try try annually. You get. I up. listen to it just to make sure it's funny again. <laughs> Sit down with a glass of Pinot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so far, nothing. What did you find? Uh, <laughs> just more beauty. Yeah, it's there's a lot of layers to it, you know. But but stand up is supposed to be. Um, I know Robbie, you're, I get more of the improv side of it is, is where you're from, but the, the, right. but stand up is supposed to be like behind closed doors almost in a way. Right. Like the, like the, the act, it's almost like, um, you know, like, uh, the tradition is that, uh, you know, in between albums, Chris Rock would drop in and do a set and the expectation would be no one's going to be recording this because it's like, he's, he's. He's trying, you know, he's trying something, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That- but now we've sort of introduced a different layer to it, uh, which is their, uh, the comedians are accountable for everything they say at all times where it's like, uh, right. I, um, yeah, I'm not a stand up like you say, but I know that I have a lot of, I have a lot of friends in stand up, and I know that this is, it's such a hot button topic for them. And a lot of them will just, just stop people from using their, you know, just point them out yeah. and, uh, you know, get just, I mean, depends on the, the size of the crowd, but they'll, they'll try and control that because yeah, you're just working out. Sometimes Chris Rock will go to the comedy cellar and just do a half an hour unplanned, right. Uh, unplanned meaning like he doesn't have anything written. He's just, uh, just working stuff out, seeing if anything happens and that's, yeah, that's nothing that's nothing for for the, for a mass audience yeah. to hear. It's the I guess maybe soon it'll be accepted, I guess, because there's no getting away from it. It'll be like people will uh on a on a macro level understand that that that's what they're doing. They're workshopping. Yeah, it's the tra- it's the trappings yeah. of fame, right? Like you you get to a certain level and all of a sudden all the same processes that you're used to that got you to where you were uh, are are un- they're inaccessible to you now, right? I think uh, I just lost my train of thought. Get, get used to that, guys. Uh oh, they're right there with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like like Louis, for instance, would probably be the Louis C.K. would probably be the 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 most formidable example right now of somebody who uh, I re- I totally respect him as a comedian. He's he's hysterical, and as a businessman, I think he's proving pretty prophetic on a lot of fronts. But like, how does he go and work out new? How is he expected to do what is essentially his job at this point, without like constantly questioning whether the people who didn't know he was going to be there and then were surprised to see him there are laughing just purely because they associate him with his you know decade of excellent stand up to this point? Like, it, he just he's become so insulated at this point. How could he possibly do his yeah. job? And I, that seems like it happens to all those guys. You know what that. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of when I saw... Well, it reminds me of a comedian called Bill Bailey in England. I don't know if either of you are familiar with them. He, where when you first see their act and it's kind of quiet and everyone's laughing with surprise because they're kind of doing what they're, doing their thing and it's unexpected and it's funny and it's kind of dopey. And then there's t- then when you hear people singing along to their songs and it gets really weird and they're expecting certain jokes... I think that 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 is a really sad thing. And the moment comedy becomes almost leading the audience, like it's like, I'm going to do that thing. I'm, I did it. There oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, that's like why Mark Marin has a problem with 
and everyone that's not <laughs> just a stand up comic who speaks from the heart. You know, prop guys and and uh, and music guys, especially you know, because everyone. they. They're, 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 that will be more expected of them. And they're just kind of doing greatest hits. You know, they're deep purple after a while. Yeah. And I think that that's happened a lot with it. I asked you before the show about Twitter, Twitter accounts you follow and such. I don't know if you see any of these ones, the kind of people who are just, you, they don't reply to anyone. And it's not like you, you've got to have like a million followers. They, they have enough to respond to people, but they, they're kind of just constantly doing bits, throwing shit against the wall until it sticks. And then you can slowly see this turn into just doing whatever they post gets 4,000 retweets. And you don't even know like what's going on anymore. Oh, right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I, um, is that the phenomenon with them? Because well, what do you follow in comedy on Twitter then? That, because you're yeah, those you're guys pass- basically, I mean, you know, you're avoiding using the, um, term weird yes. Twitter, but because it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's been, it's been kind of destroyed almost. It's like, it's like, it, it's, if you go to the, I don't, I don't know if you were on something awful, Rob. I can't imagine why you would be. No. But that's probably for the best. But I recently was talking to one of the weird Twitter people about it. And it's, it's almost getting to a point where you've got people making jokes from the place that they all came from, the fuck you and die for them. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to be introducing you to to some weird part of the internet here, but there was this forum called Fiad, Fuck You and Die. I don't know how it worked. I looked into it occasionally. It was like staring into, I don't know, a black hole. The worst of the worst for its own sake. Yeah, but it was, it had some amazing jokes in it, but it's, I've watched the phenomenon go around and I've, one of the people for, who was one of the original Fiad posters was telling me, and that is that is not a boast, by the way, because, good Lord, I would not boast about that. It's coming around where you've got popular, weird tweet, Twitter people making fired style jokes. And I'm wondering if we're just going to get to this point where it's just endless shitty jokes, like not even joke jokes, just saying, like, like disparaging things about gay people. It's like, uh-huh, what do you think, eh? <laughs> like, I don't, I guess I follow the right people then, the weird Twitter people. I don't, yeah. I, I, I they seem, they're very funny and they, they definitely have that very specific uh, tone worked out. And and I emulated it for a while. Like, I love, I'm kind of like a comedy vampire. When I find something that really makes me laugh, I will just watch it and then try and get it in my body. You know? Yeah. And with Weird Twitter, and that's when I went crazy for a while because I was away in Atlanta shooting a movie. And all I was doing was just you know, trying to, trying to, um, write jokes on Twitter, which I hadn't done in a while. And, and, you know, now of course it's completely different. I'm, I'm, I can't say a fucking funny thing on Twitter to save my life. And, uh, I just don't have it in me. And I think, but that's all to the point that I think Twitter is always a Twitter is always a uh like you know chris rock working out his set in um you know just a random 45 minutes and you can you can try whatever you want get I'll, i i've i've written jokes for children's hospital that i decided to try out on twitter first just to see if they worked um and uh you know so I I think there's like, even though everybody, uh, the media, people apply this sort of, uh, I don't know, more, more reverence to Twitter than, than, than it deserves. And than I think (laughs) most people do, I think it's really like, I still kind of feel, I still feel safe there in the way that like, I can do whatever I want. And, and people, people don't, trolls don't bother me. Like, you know, I had somebody say the other day, and I forget what it was. It was something I I said something very, very, very important about immigrants, guys. And yeah. um, somebody you. said, uh, "Oh God, will you shut up already, you faggot?" <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it Thank just made that. me laugh and kind of go like that. That kind of thing, like those. <laughs> that's the worst of it, and it doesn't. It, they can't hurt me. I don't know. I. I guess I have a thinner skin. Well, you, I guess you've done you've done a shit ton of comedy. 
I had someone the other day saying I have a stutter and I don't know why this is bothering me so much still, but I like that's been in my mind since and now the trolls know this. I've given them the ammunition. Uh-huh. But it must be are your mentions you this is a genuine question, just some with a shit ton of followers. Do you just have just constant mentions or is it le- less insane than that? Well, I mean, let me look. Um yeah, no, it's, it's not, it's less insane than that. I remember when I first joined, somebody like Ashton Kutcher said, hey, follow Rob Cordry," And I had my notifications on and uh, my phone was going crazy. Uh, that's a, a totally different, I'm, I'm looking right now. Um, Did anybody call you a faggot lately? No, no, just this one dude. Okay. Dude, he had a real turn of phrase, that guy. It's uh, a poet. Well, mentions. Last one was uh, 18 minutes ago. That's interesting. And then, oh, no, wait, all. 18 minutes, yeah. Jeez. And I seem to lose as many followers as I gain. I pretty much just hold steady, which is I, which is a, which has been, and it's been for years. I think that's a phenomenon. Like, you just hit your top value. On Twitter, and my top value is like right under one five. <laughs> well, it's you know it could be worse. Oh no no I, I but it's 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 uh yeah I'm definitely not like I don't I got in so early in this thing I don't even have a concept of it I know it's a lot and I wish there was a way I felt like I could use it for uh, publicity as well as I wasn't just shouting politics into a vacuum. I, I do think it's just kind of like a, 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 I'm venting for my own purposes, but, um, well, you, you open the door there a little bit to using your Twitter account for publicity, uh, and, and doing some, uh, research for the show earlier. I was, I was clicking around and reading Rob Cordry stuff, getting my Rob Cordry RSS feed, uh, hookup fix. And I saw something, uh, I saw something that was on uh, the gaming website Kotaku. Are you familiar with that at all? Yeah. Okay. So you got blasted on Kotaku. I did. You did. You got blasted on here. Uh, you and Al Those motherfuckers. You you and Al Madrigal got blasted on here for. Oh, oh yeah. Well, we deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? What do well, they say? It's, it's actually a little bit longer than you would expect. There's a lot of gifts on here. Um, they take. Oh, it's the review. It's it's the review of our. The performance, quote unquote performance. Yeah, for the yeah. for the for the gaming, they, they they even bashed you for not plugging the 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 tournament. I guess it was on your Twitter feed, so you, you can't even do that right, according to these guys. <laughs> that wasn't contractual. I, that was a total corporate gig. <laughs> that I was hosting the. Uh, I don't even know what it, it was. A uh, Clash Royale, the game Clash Royale. Right. I was hosting that. Al Al and I were hosting this. Um, you know the the ultimate battle. The winner would get fifteen grand, and um, and it was just it, you know you're never going to win in a situation like this. You're never going to feel particularly enthusiastic, I imagine either. No, but- I'm not getting it. I'm not going in there, you know, to like rock hard. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'll give it. Listen, they're paying me, and and I will do my best to do my duty. But uh, it's it's a you're running up against a wall usually with those things. So you just kind of have got to, are you a gamer though? If you read Kotaku, do you game? No, you don't game, no. but people think I am because I, I've done a bunch of uh corp game gamers, I guess, or, or the game companies think I am because they keep hiring me. <laughs> yeah, you did it. We were just talking about how my job was a complete scam <laughs> just before the show as well. <laughs> so, so this is Rob Cordry. He's a gamer, everyone. Hi, him. I'm a for, gamer. I love um, love gaming. All platforms. Well, you know, you, the corporate gigs uh, reminds me a lot about uh, our dear friend Dan Ninen. Uh, did you? Did, were, were you? Oh yeah. Were you aware of that fella at all? Like what? When he talks about corporate gigs, he seems to evoke. He almost talks about the corporate gig as. Uh, with the with the revenants of something that's like that's the pinnacle of the industry almost uh but but hearing you talk about it just now mm-hmm. makes it seem like uh that's the daily slog uh you got to get up and pay the bills with the corporate gig what what is it that yeah but it's like the daily slog 
if like one day in your work week you could make uh uh a lot more money than you do every other day <laughs> it's it's like three or four days of of work and uh and they they pay you an obscene way more money than than the whole thing is worth because they're a corporation and, so maybe um, he really is doing pretty well then yeah I, who's this fellow? Dan, Dan Ninen, uh, the world's only half Japanese, half Indian comedian who, when he wants his sushi, wow. he gets it at 7 Eleven. Uh, and that's one of his. Oh, well done. Well that's done. one of his bits. He, that's his only bit, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> and his story, about, his story about his age is that he's meant to be 35 or something, but he's actually like 50 and he apparently watched the two towers go down, but that's not physically possible that he was watching that. Like it, it, his story of why he got into comedy is as trite and shit as his actual comedy. Oh wait, you guys have talked about this, this guy on your podcast yeah. before. Now I see. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I kind he's, of love that a major com- this dude. I love that a major comedian doesn't know who he is. This is that gonna makes me really, happy. This is gonna hurt him a lot. He's gonna he's gonna post about this later. He's gonna post some chat logs he had with you two years ago. Yeah. All gonna <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Green and, and room it, pictures. He and was, I in the back. The of the email club. chain where he was asking you for tips on how to be more racist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you you know um, what, Dan? For you, I'll take you under my wing. Wait, I'm I'm googling right now. Uh, Dan Nanan and Rob Cordry. Maybe. There's got to be something. <laughs> oh shit, we're Let's married. See, I hope. <laughs> God, I hope. This would be so great. And zero. Okay, so you're in the yeah. Got a picture of him with Trump. Got a picture of him with Trump. And then then there's a lot of other ethnic comedians there that Google's getting. <laughs> confused yeah, he, yeah confused. he's got a picture of himself with trump he's one of the famous undecided millennial voters can't you tell by the picture you know the fact that he's a millennial uh, yeah but it's, it's i wish he was actually more funny though because then there'd be more ways to upset him but it seems that he's really easy to upset anyway just by saying you don't know who he is Oh, why is this guy like he's got obviously look at there's there's him in a private yeah. chat. He's uh he's got a great gig. He's doing a a ton of corporate stuff obviously and uh not playing in any circles where grungy comedians will be hanging out like myself. So he's made it. Good for yeah, him. Yeah, just it's it seems like for those guys who have who have made it in that sense the respect of their peers is more important uh, at some point, right? Yeah. You know, I did a um, commercial with uh, Carrot Top back in 2000. So is this right after yeah. Chairman of the Board? Oh, I think it has to be way after Chairman oh, okay. of the Board, right? Okay. Wasn't that... I think that was uh, midnight. I don't know. Eddie days. Um, but I, I was... Uh, it was... It was, you know, it was actually early 2001 and the whole, uh, the, you know, we, we, it was a, that 1-800 call ATT commercial thing that he did for a long time, just dialed down the center. Right. He's, um, and, uh, we, uh, he, he met me the day I met him. He goes, oh, so, uh, and he was the sweetest guy ever. And I know everybody says that it's, it's very true. Very sweet guy. He said, um, Oh, so you're a comedian? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, you must hate me then. Oh. Like, right off the bat. And also just with a kind of a bummer of a... Like, he, it really did hurt him. Yeah. Oh, that's... That sucks. It really did hurt him. Um, Yeah, it, it does. It does, because he was a really, really sweet guy. I mean, we had a good time during the Boy, day. Boy, that bums me out. Did you actually know who he was or just, yeah, I'm, that, that, yeah. that's kind of what oh, I'm yeah, wondering. everybody knows who he is. He was the highest, at the time, he was the highest paid comedian in the world. That's so sad. He may still be. I mean, I don't know. He's got that whole Vegas yeah, thing. That, those guys are still doing fairly well, I'm sure, out there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, once you fall into that, like, who gives a fuck about every other comic? Not- if you're, if you like money, that's, that's. 
you know, you, you made it. I actually feel like a lot of this comedy as well, thanks to, thanks to the internet and going back to the weird Twitter, irony Twitter type shit, I feel like that's a problem with comedy at the moment as well. It's refreshing when comedians are just going for laughs and it's people don't let people get mad and they start getting judgy about shows like the big bang theory. And I'm as guilty as anyone of hating that fucking show, but I watch like friends I have who like it. I'm like, Oh yeah. It's just because you're not so plugged into whatever world yeah. to just sneer at it. Like I do because I'm a horrible piece of shit. And right. No, you're, you're not aware of, of shows like broad city or, you know, that are a little farther up the dial. Like, yeah, I, that's totally understandable, but, but it is fucking awful. Yeah, it really, it really is. <laughs> it really is one. Of, I, I've been watching the weirdest comedy ever with this show called Swedish Dicks. I'm quite serious with Peter Stormare. I'm listening. Yeah, it's um, it's actually amazing. It's him and this stand-up comedian from Sweden who plays a DJ in it, and they're two Swedish unlicensed private detectives, and it's just them bumbling around LA desperately trying to make money. And it's one of the most brilliant like, dark comedies ever because it has oh, Keanu funny. Reeves in it as his, oh, his wow. dead stuntman friend, Tex. <laughs> what? Keanu Reeves plays a ghost? Yes. That's the best. It's, one to play. And that's the thing, though. That's the stuff. What, what's funny about it is it's not got that kind of wink and a nod thing because if, you, right. if, if I look at comedy now, there's the very knowing stuff. And then the kind of, all right, we're just going to tell some jokes. And it, it's like you were saying earlier, it makes you laugh, which I think is probably the best gauge of whether something's going to at least be funny to your audience. Right. And Swedish Dicks, the reason this, I marathon, I, I filled myself with Swedish Dicks. And it was brilliant because it wasn't particularly wink and nod. It kind of trod the line of what was... I don't want to say politically correct, but there was the, there were several jokes in there which were just brilliantly dark, just like murder, murder jokes, just jokes about <laughs> murder because people just die in LA randomly in it. Right. And have also having Keanu Reeves doing a really bad Texan accent is fucking brilliant. But that's, yeah, always that's, funny. But that's my, that's my kind of humor. But what I'm getting at is, you know what, the Big Bang Theory and shows that, I might despise them. They're truly terrible, but I despise them less than I do the shows or the Twitter accounts or the whatever comedy shows, which are so self-knowing. They're just playing the same hits and they're like almost looking to the audience and winking with everything they do. And I feel like, well, that's like what trash somebody Go. I don't know if I'd call girls comedy, but that's for some reason I'm thinking of girls as comedy, but any joke within that show that I get, see, I, I see get tweeted the next day or someone reference in the conversation and I never speak to that person again, it always yeah. seems to be like, it's just one that they know is going to get tweeted. And frankly, Louis, I feel, I loved Louis at first. I love Louis CK's standup. Fucking hell, Louis, if not the comedic, well, some of the comedic parts, but some of them, some of the more quote unquote meaningful moments felt so fucking telegraphed and so prepared mm. to get that Huffington Post bump the next day. Like That's Lucy. funny. I think, I, I feel differently in that like i think there is another genre hbo sort of spearheading it too like this this new genre that I mean, you can call it a dramedy but it that really doesn't that's kind of that doesn't really explain what it is because it is a half an hour comedy show that is about real shit you know, and and while girl, I don't think of girls as a comedy. I I haven't watched it in a while. I've liked it early early it on. I kind of felt that way at first. I don't know. Maybe it just changed while yeah. my memory. No, is- but, but no, it probably hasn't. Like I I I know it's very that the snarky way that they write is it's very it's well written, but it is uh, it, it it can be a little like uh, exhausting. Yeah, and 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 Louis' show. Um, man, I don't know if I can think of something. I haven't watched the last couple of seasons, well, but if- the, the the one I'm thinking of is specifically was when it started. It was kind of it felt kind of grimy. It was just kind of a grimy, if not right. meandering. It was just kind of Louis C.K. bumbling around behind the scenes, and it was kind of funny for that. And his friends sort of tolerated him, and there was something quite endearing. And then it became this weird. Like there was this weird episode. They made a very poignant thing about 
that he didn't want to go out with this girl because, and he said it was for other reasons, but because it was because she was overweight and he's, Oh, overweight. that was a great episode. It was a great episode, but I like, and I watched it and maybe this is just that the internet ruins fucking everything. I read things about it the next day. I was like, Oh, I don't like it anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just, well, that was, oh, you can't do that. Maybe that's the problem with comedy that I'm online. You're, you're, you're footnoting, you're checking the footnotes yeah, you need to get for everything. But it's making yeah. me paranoid. I, I don't know. You know, Robin, uh, w- let's see, it looked like it was uh, it was an Esquire, you said this uh, last year. You said, you don't run out to the movie theater to see a comedy. And uh, I don't know, what do you think right now about where comedies are? Because if I try to think about the best comedies of the last two or three years, I'm having a hard time coming up with you know, a boatload of them. It seems like a lot of the best comedy is being written for TV. Like you said on HBO, where they're a little more free to push the boundaries, maybe of what constitutes a comedy. Well, movies Uh, have a move. The the format of movies, like the way you write a movie, you know, the three act structure, the hero's fucking journey. Like it, it's you, you can't write that unless you're writing a specifically, you know, like an indie movie that breaks that, on purpose. I don't know. I, I don't think you can write a real satisfying comedy that, that doesn't seem to people sort of in the know, uh, the, you know, kind of just cute in a way. I don't know you, because people can see the seams now. Yeah. You know, which is one of the, one of the yeah. things we played on in children's hospital is, oh, yes. is that it, it became, you know, we were a, I guess, parody of uh of of hospital dramas for the first two years or so but after that it became like sort of a an homage to tropes in um in in tv and film meaning like the audience felt smart because they could they knew that when when lake bell comes in after having been gone a whole season because she died and says yeah. Long story short, I didn't die. Anyway, get back. Let's get back to the plot. <laughs> like that, they know that specific right. trope where we're we're shining a light on, and they laugh and move on. You know, so people are v- really savvy. I think even the like what we would consider the non savvy TV viewer pretty pretty savvy. Yeah, I. To be fair as well, I remember for some reason I was watching Sunset Beach about a decade ago and then just randomly they changed actresses midway through. Oh, I remember man. that being the probably the funniest moment in TV for me and it wasn't even, it's just like the part of this character will now be played by this person. Never mentioned again, just gone. Just like that, that actress yeah, that's died. the way you got to do it. Like, that's the way you got to do it. I've always was- wanted to do that. And Louis does that too. Yeah, Louis does it where you know his yeah. wife is black one oh, season or, that's and amazing. then goes away See, that's or whatever. What I love right? about it's, Louis is that there's and Children's is more like a cartoon, right? Louis is more like a, a right. documentary style comedy. Um, you know, yeah. but uh, I love just eschewing um, continuity. And saying, fuck it, you get it. We're just telling a story, whatever. And he's almost doing it to be like, he's, he, 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 he cast his uh, wife as black in one season because he's like, this doesn't matter. And, and it's funny if nobody acknowledges yeah. it, if there's absolutely no acknowledgement yeah. of something like that. Oh, of course. No, you can't get meta anymore. Like, that's just dumb. Which is the reason that's I like a wink. That's why I hate Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon and a lot of SNL because of the corpse thing. I can't watch yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, is he I just wonder how much is like cuz that guy I don't know him. I've only been on his show once. I I I I do think that oh, and maybe like cuz I don't know. I'm just a I'm a little naive in that way like I tend to just trust people. <laughs> I'm a terrible judge of character and and I think like he just really just can't stop laughing. That's what I yeah. always thought. I never. Th- do people seriously yeah. think that he's deliberately laughing? Yeah, I think. Oh, oh yeah, definitely, no. definitely in the comedy world. Oh, that's why would you do that? That seems like a really bad act. Is do people find laughing no. at that? Well, yeah, exactly. And I think it's very cynical. I mean, it's just cynical of comedians that aren't as successful as Jimmy Fallon. And I say that. And it's. And I mean, it's, it's not my taste. I don't care for it, but I don't fault him for it. 
Yeah, I think that he seems like he's trying. I think uh, good for him. That's what I say to the host of he this night show. You, is, uh, good, good for you, Jimmy. You know? Podcast listener Jimmy Fallon, thank yeah. you. But Jimmy, where is your statement on the executive orders of Donald Trump? Don't see- has not made a statement about the executive just, orders. Just pet, just pet his head. He dropped the ball like a dog. That was that was fucked up. But that's actually really interesting, though, because you, both you and Rob He's counter programming. Yeah, that's it. It's all a strategy. He's in the woods yeah. with Hillary Clinton. <laughs> He's playing 4D chess right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting there with one of those boards, like in A Beautiful Mind. Oh, if only, re- <laughs> if only real life was actually that good. But that's, I was going to say, like, you, you and Rob Delaney, I think are the two I've noticed do it the most. You've kind of, I wouldn't say convert, because that suggests more calculation than I think. Right. Is, but you've got... I'm sure you have people and you mentioned like, stop being political, go back to, go back to oh, yeah. funny jokes. But what yeah. made you do that? Was it just the, the overall despair at everything? Yeah, no, it's good. No, no, God, no, it's not. Who would calculate that as being a good thing to do? Yeah. I hate it when celebrities won't shut the fuck up about politics. I hate it. And then recently I just can't, I've been completely uh, consumed with it. And I just can't stop. Like I'm very, it's, it's something I'm obsessed with in my life. And therefore, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm putting out on Twitter. And I don't know. I don't know what's useful or not. I I still haven't discovered that. I think that that's, that's a problem though. When people start asking what's useful, it start, even I'm guilty of it. Even I'm guilty of going after people and saying, that's not useful. But then I see people doing it at scale and I saw the most vacuous argument. I actually love, would love your take on this. The Milo interview with Bill Maher, is that how you say yeah. it? He's, I saw someone going back and forth about how it wasn't constructive to criticize it. And then people, including me, and I probably shouldn't have, it was like fucking one in the morning. And it's just there on like a Saturday. It's like fucking like, that's fucking it. Just listen to me. Do you, <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Maybe this election is just actually driving everyone a little bit crazy. It's just destroying everything. This election, Jesus. That's it's, it. That's it. That's it for me. Yeah. For sure. I'm trying to make jokes about all this shit. Every time I tweet re- recently, I'm, tr- I w- really would, I'm wishing I could make a joke about whatever I'm saying. I just don't, I just don't, I can't spin it like that right now. I don't know. That's actually a good point. I'm not seeing much Trump comedy, apart from SNL, and comedy is a stretch there. There's not really, right. there's not really many people making these jokes. There's not really many people going for like Trump, like Bush. There were fuck tons of people making fun of Bush. I feel like there's way less of that in the comedy world with Trump. Huh. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think, um, I think the late night shows, uh, Jimmy Fallon excluded are, are having sort of a, a heyday. Like, like George Bush was very good to us on the daily show, just like he's being very good to SNL and, and all the late, late night shows. Um, but, uh, I guess I, I just hang out with comedians. I, you know, I, I guess I, um, there I, I, on Twitter though, I, I agree like Sarah Silverman or whoever Delaney is less likely to make a joke about Twitter than, than they are. And me included to, to, you know, say something that we can't stop ourselves from saying. Yeah. And it's, there's also, is there ever the worry that someone else would have done, done the joke first as well? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Always. And I, you know what? Fuck it. I get called out on that sometimes. I did, um, when Mike Pence got, uh, got, uh, booed or whatever, got, got, got lectured at the Hamilton performance. Right. Um, <laughs> five minutes after I tweeted, um, but I forget what it was. What's the actual quote? Like. But other than that, um, Mrs. Pence, how did you like the play? And just an easy <laughs> right. softball, yeah. right? Like softball. And fucking Twitter descended on me saying like, yep, Seth MacFarlane that got there before you, buddy. 
Yeah, like that was all my <laughs> mentions. And and I responded, including Seth in the uh in the response, like it won't be the first time or the last time uh I've I've stolen from Seth McFarlane without <laughs> knowing it. I was oh, I was hoping you'd go for it more directly and just be like, thanks for the fucking joke, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Those mentions. Fuck you. Come and get me. <laughs> That's actually what happened the last time I got called out for something like that. It was like the dumbest joke ever, and I did it while taking a dump, and I don't know why I remember that so vividly, but it's mm. how I make my tweets. And I remember someone called me out, and they were like, this person made this joke two minutes ago. I was like, yeah, I fucking stole it from them. The retweets are mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. And they got really mad at me because I think they thought I was serious somehow, that like retweets are something you can turn in. At the Department of Labor or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're a commodity. Well, my clout score, however. <laughs> my success matrix yeah. is through the roof. <laughs> Add that to the retweet matter over here. But completely different question, because I've... So, preparing this, I read every interview I could find within a certain point. After that, they all started blurring into each other. Oh, what a great couple of days it's been for you, huh? It's, it's an exciting time. Also, <laughs> days, of, days of research would be giving me way too much credit. But So, you did... The only thing I care about from your comedy history, because I think otherwise it would just be you repeating things, is what Shakespeare did you do? I'm genuinely curious. Oh! Oh, uh, everyone mentions you doing Shakespeare, but never actually name it. Um, I, I did, uh, when I graduated, I was, I guess you could say to, I, my joke is that I'm classically trained. Like when I fuck up on set, (laughs) I say classically trained. Um, I, I had classic training and when I got to New York, I, um, you know, a bunch of my friends moved right from acting school to, to, to um, New York. And, and that's what we did. I did a, probably a whole year's string of really shitty Shakespeare plays, including, uh, God, I've done Romeo and Juliet three times. Uh, I did Hamlet, Much Ado About Nothing, uh, 12th. No, no, not Much Ado About Nothing. That's what I wanted. That's my, one of my favorites. And now I'm too old. Um, You're never too old, man. I think back man. to it. Um, uh, Twelfth night. Uh, <laughs> Can I hear you? Shit. I. I mean, everything. Uh, 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 nothing. Uh, nothing historical. Nothing uh, except for. I really Henry V is the one that I wish I could go back in time in a hot tub time machine. Duh. <laughs> With the rock. With the rock. Would the play. rock be? Uh, That'd be Henry great. The Daniel Mercutio in Baz Luhrmann's version of Romeo and Juliet as well. <laughs> oh my god! I played. Wait, I played. Oh no! It was because I played two roles in that play. I did. Uh, yeah, Paris twice in oh, Romeo geez. and Juliet, and Mercutio and Lord Capulet in um in the other play, the other production, and Lord Capulet is the role that. Um, uh, as I was playing it in my mid early to mid twenties, thinking like someday I'm going to be really good at this role. <laughs> like when I'm old enough to play it, that's a great role. Yeah. Just Polonius was the one I like playing. It, it, Everybody likes playing Polonius. <laughs> Fucking hell. Owned again. <laughs> Ed, Fuck you, you dude. Come on, Ed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm I'm you laughing. Suck, I'm not mad. I'm- what is that? What, have you done this kind of stuff? I I was I went to the same heist, the the worst claim to fame, and it's on like all the prospectuses. The fucking British secondary school I went to was where Alan Rickman and Hugh Grant went. So you wow. have to do Shakespeare. And you have to. If you don't wow. do Shakespeare, it's like fuck you, kid. You know you're not worth yeah, it. Yeah, being British just is just I guess it's it's on your life resume anyway that you've you've done Shakespeare. Yeah, it's if you haven't if you haven't something went wrong or much more right than you intended. Right. Uh, I don't know. It's it's funny looking at uh, again return to Peter Stormare just talking about and reading that you dig Shakespeare so much. The reason I brought it up was a lot of these modern actors don't go through that kind of stuff. Stormare 
it's men- mentioned to me once. He was saying um, he hates the whole Carl Hungus role because he's like classically trained. Ingmar Bergman wrote him up and everyone remembers him as a fucking electrician and a nihilist. And it's just interesting. Oh, right, right. It's interesting hearing about you having done, and you joke about it, but you did, you were classically, you did a year of fucking Shakespeare. That's enough. Well, I didn't get paid. I thought you did get paid. Said in one of the other well, I got paid, I got paid a, a, a I second year. Yeah, I did a tour of, uh, of Much Ado About Nothing and Hamlet. You were paid. So I was paid for that. Yep. That was the first paying gig. It was like $300, $400. Yeah. Like, well, well, well done for that, I guess. Fuck. Hey, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, that's all right. What? So, The Rock, have you seen his dick? <laughs> that's, that's the only fucking that's the great only, question. Only ballless question I had written down. No. You know what? It's a great question because Dwayne, as I call him, as close friends call him, <laughs> um, sure. DJ maybe sometimes, I don't know. Forget it. It's not, not relevant. <laughs> Um, we, we seemed to like during readings when we, whenever we, the cast would get together at HBO and, and read through some episodes always on the same, uh, bathroom schedule, <laughs> I'd always be peeing next to the rock. And no matter how comfortable I feel with him as a person, it's still like fucking I don't, I've never got to look at, look at his dick. Not for lack of trying though. I will look at his dick. I would always, I would second, look at his dick. Of course. I would always imagine it would be like encroaching on your space. Like just kind of like so large. Would it be? I don't know. I just imagine he has a large. Well, yeah. If he was like, Hey, Hey Rob, I just take a look at this. Take a look at my dick. How, what do you think of that? That would be encroaching on my space. I just, I just meant by sheer largeness, but yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I think if I, if I had to go piss with the rock, I would definitely go into the stall and let him have the, I don't, I couldn't stand next to the rock and hold yeah, but it was one my of those little things dick and piss. Come next, in the I don't think I could. You're just making a beeline for the urinals and then you see him. And then if you turn slightly to the left to go to uh, the, the stalls, then, you know, you thought about it. Then he knows what's it's, up. Knows you know, you're thinking about him. Yeah, think yeah, about it. You, just you can't have that. Yeah, Pay your dues. It, it will. Oh, boy. I'm not <laughs> yeah. ready to be a celebrity. That's, that's, well, that's tough. Like me with every... It doesn't matter if they're a celebrity. That, that's. I'm just always slightly paranoid. I'll piss next to a regular guy. I mean, a regular... You, like, you go to the... Like, where do you line up to pee most? I guess sports events, sure. uh, like movie theaters, that kind of stuff. I mean, you just... You just uh, like what about the uh, when they're the troughs? You got any problem no, with troughs? No, 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 no. Uh, I can do that. You go. You do that. Do no that. problem, right? But could you um, do it with the rock? Yeah, that, 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 those don't bother me. Oh yeah, I would love to do that. No, no, he's got his own bathroom. They, they <laughs> take a bathroom with him <laughs> his own wherever trough. he goes. He's got a security <laughs> detail, uh, hair and makeup team, trough, and he's got a a, a bathroom. <laughs> I'm I, the way you described he that. I imagine it. someone like carrying one around for him. Yeah, that's exactly what. That's how I described it. He, there's a guy carrying around uh, a bathroom, a, a portable bathroom, <laughs> and even that guy is way more ripped than you are. So it's like you're They're even below. Ripped. Yeah, you're They're below all the piss guy. Ripped. Makeup, every like this 65 year old makeup woman, <laughs> I'm fucking imagine, ripped to shreds. I'm imagining like in 300 with the chair, with they got the four like giant blokes holding the chair. Except it's just a big shitter. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's yep. beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, and I th- but uh, that's my kind of comedy. Just thinking of giant toilets held up by muscle men. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough of that. You can't get a comedy that's, made like that anymore. That's the best way you're talking well, about. Finally, you can't, you can't get the broad comedy there. anymore. That's why I'm kind of like, and not for the toilet stuff, but for <laughs> stuff like Children's Hospital. And I was thinking of. Not Reaper. There's this show that's on Hulu with a bloke who's in Reaper where it's like this dipshit medium as in he can truly see ghosts and helps them out, but he's a stoner. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tyler Labine? Yeah, that bloke. Yeah. Um, I, f- I forget what... It, I've, I just tried to Google it and Tyler Perry came up and it's called Deadbeat. <laughs> and they cancelled it, of course, because nothing Deadbeat, good can yeah. exist in this world. 
but it's that kind of weird fucking comedy. I'm kind of glad streaming exists for it for as many much bad racist comedy as is on YouTube, just alone. There is great things like that as well. And children's hospital as well. And it's nice to see that kind of creative access and the funding behind it as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, uh, I liked that show. I only saw like one or two of them. Cause who, who has a fucking time? Yeah. who? T- <laughs> but, but uh, that was a pretty good show. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> and I am glad I like, I agree. I'm glad that if you have, there's so many ways to get something made right now. If you're a creative person and you want to tell stories in this medium, like there's so many ways to do it. Sure. Can you write some of them down Number and send them one. to me after the show? Okay. Thank you. What if the rock got in a hot tub? Yeah. Time Bulk sure. up. Bulk up. <laughs> the next Brahma Number two, bowl. I gotta become do a functional alcoholic. Functional. Uh, okay. All right. Functional. I was almost there with you, but okay. Functional. Got it. Uh, that's all right. That is, that is so hot. Wow. I'm not cut out for it. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's not cut that out. I want you all held accountable for the things we've done tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tonight is the night of fucking morning. Cause dangerous by Merlin Yiannopoulos was of course canceled. We will never be able to read from him again. Wait, what, 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 what? His book, he got, he got a quarter of a million dollar advance for a book from Simon and Schuster and it got yanked because for some reason, the like months and years of just being a horrible piece of shit, like a racist and like anti-trans, that horrible piece of shit was bad. And then he's like, he sort of intimates, he thinks it's okay that Peter, he thinks pedophiles are okay. And like, that's it. Like this horrible oh, fuck. Like that's oh, what pushed him oh, he's done. Yeah, and he's done. That's and it sounds I like he's it. about that to get whole, fired as and well. That whole maybe from, from Breitbart oh, went yeah. right up his nose within uh, like a month. You know it. Yep. He owes that publishing company money. <laughs> that's it is quite bummer. funny actually. Watching it, it's the new version of it's what's well, the new world we live in. It's this horrible. The other, the theme of the scumbag has always been the horrible parts of the internet. But it's nice to see the horrible parts of the internet finally fuck over someone horrible in the, there is a running log of everything you do online. Someone could. Right. And yeah, got, there's a record. Check going, the record. But going back to your point about comedians trying out shit, they can't just go to a random club now because some ass wipe with a phone in there could put it up. Except in this case, the ass wipe became the ass wipe. I don't really fucking know, but Milo sucks and it's definitely gone into <laughs> blow. <laughs> It's yeah. good when it happens to somebody we don't but like. It, but That's the bad. important thing. It, it's good away. when it happens to someone I don't like, but it's bad when it happens to someone I like who someone else doesn't like. Fuck Twitter is confusing. That, <laughs> right. That really is it. Yeah. Ugh. I think that's a good place to wrap up for the episode. Rob, thank you so much for coming on. Really Wait a minute. It. Wait, that's great. That's it? We, I feel like that was just the intro. That, oh, yeah. Sorry about that, Rob. No, yeah, that well, that was the that was the practice. Yeah. And now we're gonna hit record, and we are gonna go for it. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Thank you for coming. Hey, thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Rob. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Scumbag. Thank you, everyone.